Uh, can I get my mic fixed? This thing keep mash up and fire up on, on my ear in enough time now, you know. So, come on, let's get this, let's get this right, lads. I'm Samuel Ross, and this is Open to Change Mentorship Session 2 with Dazed and Converse. We're just going to be here discussing some of the concepts and business endeavours that, you know, the hyper-talented all-stars have put together. Um, so yeah, so my brand, Greater Goods, primarily focuses on like upcycling product um, and recreating physical objects. And it, it's a very physical thing. But the idea I've had in my mind for quite a while now is to work on like a community-based project where it's more about the experience. Um, and this whole Greater Goods retreat is what I've called it, is kind of like, it's based on just my experience of li living in the city and never growing up with like exploring countryside elements, being part of like my family structure in a sense, like going out for weekend trips to the countryside was never really a thing. I've kind of only experienced city life for a very long time. And I know a lot of people just like me that's in a similar position. So I kind of wanted to almost create a retreat for young adults in the, in the city that I've never experienced like another way of living, like i.e. countryside, a bit more rural, um, where you're off your phone, away from screens. So the schedule kind of focuses on three different sectors of learning, mental well-being and physical well-being. So these are just like a list of um, things that could be in the itinerary over the two days. So obviously it will involve money um, and itinerary and producing. And I thought like teaming up with a brand would be the best way to handle that. Um, and then pitching it to a brand, tying it into like a campaign launch. So maybe the product that the, the members of the retreat could be wearing. So that way everyone kind of wins from the experience. The brand could get content of new product. And the greater good side is I've taken kids out of the city to experience a, a new way of life and a different outlook. I mean, it's a super interesting way to look at how um, brands can you know genuinely and i guess authentically just give something new to a community and i think there's a real strong story in it that hasn't necessarily been told um before it would be good to um look at how grassroots and lo-fi marketing could possibly support a pitch or presentation deck to not just brands but um local councils like the national trust uh, you know, okay. family estates that hold a lot of green space across the country um, that need really Gen Z and millennials activating those environments because there is like a, there's a generational gap as well as there is like a, like a, a, a literal, you know, um, locational gap of sorts. The first thing that comes to mind is almost slicing down. You've got this deck and it's a really tight concept but if you were to pitch it, you know, how would you how would you convey this idea to say like a brand or to uh, a possible um, you know like a national trust partner? Matt, what's what's your initial thought? If um, you were pitching this to Converse, let's say, I mean, you wouldn't be pitching it to me. You'd be pitching it to my marketing department first, quite honestly. And so mm. I think there's a little bit of um, having that in mind as well, where it's um, you know I think. In, term, in terms of like the, the slightly bigger, you know, sports lifestyle corporations, whether it's the Converse's, the Nike's, the whomever's, um, you obviously should be pitching it from a creative perspective and with creative intent. Um, but at the same time, I would say people generally have quite a short attention span as well. So I mm -hmm. think it's like very much striking imagery, like, you know, some, you, you do want some, some words in there, but, um, but but I always say never n never too many. Um, you know, mm. one of the things I kind of uh, I, I I try and guide when we have like let's say new designers come into the um, come into the, the the company and they're giving a design presentation. I know this isn't necessarily a design presentation, but you know same format. You're kind of pitching um, you're pitching something to somebody. Um, obviously, you want them to buy in the design. Um, less is more. The idea is I want to approach and partner up with a distinguished fashion forward lifestyle brand that's infamous for stepping up and out for the culture. So I feel that whoever I want to embark this concept with um, needs to be really a great ally and an authentic ally who actively wants to acknowledge and celebrate a poignant uh, calendar moment such as Black History Month and beyond. 
So I would want someone who would want to help me expunge the notion that black individuals can only be celebrated one month a year. I want to kind of, yeah, push the boundaries and actually like go beyond that, make sure that we're getting celebrated daily, not just October in the UK and February in the States. You know, if you could summarize this in you know, five or six words or like a, a really, really succinct point. Because I've got an idea of what this is, but what, what, how would you describe this? A local community movement. I feel like essentially it could be. It's not just about necessarily like the event across the three days. It's obviously carrying on those conversations and carrying on kind of like that connection with one another past that. So I feel like I can't actually necessarily separate a clear, definitive, idea of what I want it to be like outwardly in my mind I know what I want it to be but definitely not something I could probably contextualize verbally to you right now if I'm being honest. I think it's a broadcasting company in a news channel that has digital channels and physical channels. Okay. You know and if I was to break it down into two parts your digital channels based on what you said you wanted to do you'd probably yeah. have you know YouTube, Instagram and Twitter and then on the physical side of course you've got your you know um, seasonal event space um, for event space, in terms of practical practicality, speaking to temporary hire company like Appear Here would probably help. Mm -hmm. Reese, the founder, has done incredibly well. He's a person of colour and he's London based. Sweet. And they do really short hires and they're really good at bringing in funding to support those type of activities. So I will present you what we did uh, last year for the first project that we did. So. We released a t-shirt called the 100% tea and we sold it in last July, I think, in July 2020, just after the, um, the George Floyd death and the BLM movement. And we felt like that we need to do something to help people in Paris because what happened in the United States is kind of the same thing that exists in Paris or even in England. That, And we really wanted to do something to help communities here and to give a positive message to people. So with this t-shirt, we raised almost 10K, 10,000 10, euros, and it helped us to produce the t-shirt. Then we gave it to two associations in Paris, La CIMAD and Energy Jeune. We uh, were helping people and young people, especially uh, in Paris. Thanks for taking us through that, JV. First, congrats because that's not a small number to achieve, you know, and to be like that reactive to. So that like, I mean, it shows there's definitely like a need for this to exist, you know? I think like instinctively, the first thing that comes to mind is, um, as it's been pretty much a year since, what are your plans in terms of like immediate follow-up? It, it could even be good just to kind of get another t-shirt out there, get like a cap out there, just to kind of show that there's like a momentum and like continuity to it. Um, and then the second thing that, directly comes to mind is looking at um, the accessibility of, you know, jersey, t-shirts, hats, caps, hoodies, um, don't just exist in fashion, but they exist in like consumables. So, you know, um, drinks, snacks, like these other categories, which are really, really accessible, could be worth, you know, possibly looking at um, venturing into, which could, potentially help with some of the like top line and like financial support you, you would want from organization. Because as, as you said, you know, some of the notes I put down here were about looking at, you know, regional partners, which makes sense for not, not for profit activity to run funding and also to support the studio itself in terms of operating costs. But there's an opportunity to look at who are the right collaborators for this project and who, who, are, who are the ideal top line collaborators and then who are the more like grassroots collaborators and how do you kind of keep this, um, I guess, this mesh between big NGO, not-for-profit engagements whilst also kind of doing hyper-local, lo-fi community engagements. Would that, that could be an interesting place to, to kind of look at how you map out, you know, once you've kind of worked with four or five not-for-profits, not or if you've worked with everyone within, you know, one year, how do you pivot the next year to still keep that momentum and collaborator model going? Do you need to actually split, you know, like your 12-month calendar and say, okay, 
you know, in quarter one, we're going to focus on commercial partnerships. We want one, you know, for, let's say North America. For, for quarter two, we want to focus on, um, you know, World Health Organization. For quarter three, we want to focus on a luxury retailer and we want to close out quarter four with like a hyper local skate or streetwear brand. You know, just having that, again, I, I kind of, I'm kind of repeating this thing, but like this, this idea of having like a calendar to kind of forecast will really assist in you kind of being able to look at um, what you're already doing, lock it all in within like a, a month to six weeks and then just respond to that calendar that, that's been locked in. And I mean, Matt could probably speak to this. I mean, Matt works for footwear. So his, his calendar, you talk like a 36-month calendar. Sam, I heard calendar. the magic word, I heard calendar. I was yeah. like, gang on, Sam's talking about the calendar again. You I was like, oh, it's a great opportunity for me it to is. flash up the next Converse calendar and just take you through, Sam. I'm only kidding. Don't oh, worry about the time like that. But no, I mean, you are, you are right there, though, Sam. And I mean, that has been a through line and I think it's an important through line. And you know, and just, I'm maybe going to go a little corporate on you for a second, but, you know, ultimately, the, the calendar is is where I start, begin, I exist every single day. And quite honestly, we generally, uh, at Converse, had two uh, two words in the, in the front of that. It's work back calendar, because quite honestly, it, it, it is rare that we're ever projecting forward. Doesn't mean we're not thinking forward, but honestly we're all, we're always living in the future and projecting back and trying to work the steps back and that's why i think like you know some of those you know commonality and maybe some of the, the points we're discussing it's like what what's what's the end game even if it's the end game for like stage 1 of this journey because i think if you if you have the clear vision of like all right by next year this is where we want to get to it it it's not easy but it starts to become easier to then like map the things of like, all right, what do I need to do to get there to then start like really looking at the puzzle pieces of which one comes first or which one facilitates the other. I'll, I'll share with you um, a bit of my process and just this uh, film that I've, I'm finishing. It's called Max et les étranges, um, Max and the Freaks, but I, I've made a, um, a separate English title that goes like uh, to repel ghosts. And it's the story of Max. Um, he he's this young queer man, and he goes through this like very odd and obstacle-filled uh, night to find his true self, which is uh, Uma. Um, uh, it's 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 a drag queen like he has like alter egos and anyways. I came across this. It's called like a story clock. It's just, it takes your linear um, um, story line and then just wraps it in a circle. Through symmetry, you can um, solve problems. So like, basically you don't know what's gonna happen here uh, in your story, then you can you can just uh, see what happens like a across and just see how you can make that happen. Well, basically like every step of like just uh, writing, editing also, it's very useful. And and yeah, and so now I'm I'm finishing the edit and I'm trying to make a a trailer for it, but it's it's I'm stuck. How do you see this film kind of sitting in your portfolio of previous film work? You know, if you look back at your existing portfolio, what has worked and what hasn't worked, and you know, if you go back to the initial inception of this film concept, what was you know the key priority you wanted to convey? Mm in it in terms of in terms of you know was it about motion was it about a particular you know camera lens was it about um you know lack of spoken word because the story arc seems well the character development is really really strong definitely an additive the developments are really pronounced you can see by the sketches you've definitely got like a strong um perspective on like frames per second you want to use and like having like a slow exposure camera running throughout with like a film grain and like a like a cool tinted grade so like it seems, visually and character arc seems like it's totally there. If you feel like this, do, do you, it, maybe it's about, you know, reducing like the amount of spoken word that runs throughout, if there is any in this, and making it more of like a montage piece, which is conveyed through, you know, deep rich um, filmography and post-production techniques versus mm. it being this visual intensity, which is already really strong and then type on top of that. Because I would assume the arc is so strong, you know, and, and the clock you developed is so strong that the issue might be that um, 
if you add verbiage on top of that intensity, there that might be too much too much mm. uh, information for the user to take away. Whereas if you isolate it on, you know, the image making itself, and it becomes far more of like a stylistic poetic piece without mm. a heavy reliance on spoken word, that might free it up a bit. I've come up with something that I feel no one could take from me, which is my last name, which my father gave me. And um, Yaboa means helping others um, in, 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 um, in the tribe that we come from, in the Shanti tribe, in the Khan tribe. It means helping others, which I've used for the, the strap line. The story is basically, um, my mum sent me to Ghana to break a generational curse. Um, me and my brother like have very big similarities, but my mum, saw me following his ways too much um and she thought it would li like lead me to like jail and all of that sort of stuff i was misbehaving in school also nearly got kicked out so she sent me to ghana um for two and a half years and it was a one-way ticket so i wasn't coming back um and while i was there i still had like the fashion installed in me i still wanted to start a brand out there and i didn't have a name for it and this is a, a concept that i always had with me um, so yeah, I've, I've put this in there. Um, you can click again. So, uh, this is like I was saying before, I've got part two, but this is part one, which is pieces that I feel are strong enough for me to put into, um, this collection here. You could click through and I could just talk you through each piece. Uh, the butterfly effect, which is kind of explaining, um, like me being a cocoon in, in a cocoon before I went to Ghana and me turning into a butterfly, expressing my feelings, um, my spiritual awakening, uh, that sort of thing. I think that, we, I think just to go back a second, like the visual language is really strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is half of that question answered. Because okay. usually if you don't have a strong, or if you, not if you don't have a strong visual language, but storytelling often supplements part of, you know, a visual language, if it's not necessarily distinct enough. What you've already got, to a certain degree here, but especially with some of the graphic designs in particular. And like if, if we go to like, you know, the page which has a full line sheet of all of the product, mm -hmm. you've done such a good job at distilling down the graphic language. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like the, the yellow jumper and the black star, the placement, the, the font that you've used for your bow on the front and that puffer coat. I think that part of telling this story is telling the feeling of the story than telling the literal story. Okay. You know, I think like it's really good that you've got a literal story in there, which mm -hmm. kind of underpins all of the visual references, but you've already communicated them in, in the product. I think it's now, and I think you, you're already partly doing this. Like when I look at the balaclava, when I look at the puffer coat, when I look at the yellow hoodie, when I look at the white shirt and the yellow sunglasses, there's already this like super luxe feeling to it. So mm -hmm. it's then about the casting and it's then about finding the right type of photographer who can carry that type of, um, I guess, um, boisterousness or, or artistic creativity with it. If, if you had to place your brand mm -hmm. amongst, you know, other brands out there, it doesn't matter if they're new or old or high or low, where mm -hmm. would you want it to sit? Because that's also, that will also answer part of the question of how do you convey this through, yeah. say, photography and, and editorial. Fundamentally, you just need the most influential, you know, layer of community that are in the dances and in, and in the raves. Mm -hmm. and you need top line you almost you need you want to build a community in an authentic yeah. way but you don't want your community to be too much of your friends and family you've got to almost separate that away that grassroots way of building is the best way yeah. it's the yeah. best way to do it because it's always your face with someone that you respect stylistically and they'll likely you know appreciate the product that you're actually handing them i appreciate that so much man and I, and, and um yeah man thank you guys so much for answer my questions and giving me the strength to, you know, go back to the drawing board and tweet what I need to tweet. We're thinking of doing like a short, like, um, documentary series on, um, like, us being inspired and like interviewing other creatives and then collaborating with them and then yeah. kind of just documenting the process of, um, like, our journey of like collaborating and then creating something. It's very much about getting back into um creating kind of this network and highway of us like getting to know other creatives and collaborating again and and before we weren't really creating 
a particular piece or of or anything out of it we were kind of just traveling and being like oh yeah we're just gonna meet these people but now it's very much um it kind of like a travel vlog slash documentary and so that it's something we can put on paper we wanted to create a kind of personal encyclopedia oh my god i cannot speak today sorry um encyclopedia. yeah um of creatives that we can potentially work with in the future that could be a part of the agency especially if it's it's like multi-national so it's very much kind of we want to build kind of like a loyal base where we can just like create with other creatives and potentially work with them i don't want to say scouting because that's it's like a directory of sorts yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like a, it's a, direct, direct like a phone book so it will benefit them like more than like as well as benefiting us as well i think it's a good solution i think the directory is really clever because it's not i mean in part once it's moving that's almost answering part of the question that we posed last time right of how do you not feel like you're selling out and how do you still kind of move forward um you know being able to drive revenues and commercial projects and if you're actually building this community-based directory you then just have like this interlinked network of people you can work with while still kind of enjoying um the work in itself because they do come from or share like a, a particular creative sensibility i think for partners as well you know commercial partners that come to you it's just like another um, it's not like a virtue signal, but it, it, it's a sign that your practice lives beyond two individuals, which is hyper important to ensure that you're able to kind of, I guess, extract more opportunities from the partnerships, whether it be from, you know, typographic, graphic design, print material, all the way through to, you know, moving image and all the way through to, you know, film and sound. And those words mentioned hold so much value if you're, say, taking on like a 360 project. So the directory, seems like a like a really good um a, a good step forward and i guess it's looking at um would you would you see this living primarily on like a dot com or would this exist on socials because you did mention you know the social media element kind of replacing the fact that we can't travel now so how how do you kind of see those two you know living together or do they live completely separately i think the aim is to have it on most platforms so it's more accessible to kind of just everyone, everyone. Um, yeah. So to recap um, quickly, some of the the key learnings uh, and you know thoughts and, and and parts of discussion that really stood out for something to kind of continuously build, you need constant motion, constant activity and constant activations. And again, having that calendar in place will allow you to really identify the gaps in the market um, and in your calendar. Going back down to a grassroots way of building community. Yes, it's your friends and it's your family. They're always going to support you. To a certain degree, you shouldn't even count them. They're just, they're on your side. You really need to think about who do you want to speak to why do you want to speak to them and how do you speak to them? Delegation between the team, who does what? Who's the creative lead? Who's the managing director? Who's head of finance? What contractor do, do you go to when you're looking for site locations? It's not enough to just stick to your own. You've got to throw yourself out there. So those are the three points that um, seem to really resonate between the, uh, the dialogues and I hope you, you enjoyed the, uh, the conversation. Yeah.